NCAR, the National Center for Atmospheric Research, which is sponsored by the National Science Foundation, presents this documentary film about the tropical wind, energy conversion, and reference level experiment, or TWIRL, filmed in Pongo Pongo, American Samoa, during the summer of 1975. Five years of intensive design and fabrication effort for the TWIRL project were put to the test with the successful launch of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration's Nimbus 6 satellite. On board the satellite was the random access measurement system, which received data from approximately 400 TWIRL balloons launched from three tropical sites and one mid-latitude site. The sites were Pongo Pongo, American Samoa in the South Pacific, Accra, Ghana, Ascension Island in the South Atlantic, and Christ Church, New Zealand. Data received from this experiment will enable scientists to better understand global weather patterns with the eventual result of long-term weather prediction. The constant level balloons regularly orbited the Earth for a period up to six months, powered only by the wind. Once a day, data were relayed from the satellite to the NASA ground station at the Goddard Space Flight Center and then on to NCAR in Boulder, Colorado. On June 12, 1975, a Thor Delta rocket successfully launched the Nimbus 6 satellite into orbit. Nimbus 6 is the latest model of a sophisticated atmospheric research satellite series sponsored by NASA. Constant level balloons are a special type of weather balloon originally designed and developed by the NCAR staff. They are spherical in shape when fully inflated with helium and reach a diameter of 3.5 meters. Each balloon will carry a 1,500 gram payload of electronics to an altitude of 48,000 feet. The upper third of each balloon is capped with a metallized mylar film. The cap helps keep the balloon gas warmer at night and minimizes frost accumulation on the balloon. Balloon overflights are prohibited by several northern hemisphere countries. A cut-down device is therefore required to terminate the flight of any twirl balloon before it flies beyond the tropics into the northern hemisphere. When the cut-down circuit is activated, it separates the flight train from the balloon. The voltage regulator keeps the voltage flow from the solar power supply to the flight instruments constant.
The satellite determines the balloon position from the signals generated by the stable oscillator and transmitter shown here. The electronics are encased in foam packages for protection and thermal control. The balloon to satellite antenna was specially designed for the twirl program. Before deployment, the antenna appears as a shapeless mass of plastic film. However, upon launch, when tension is applied across the skeleton, the antenna skin is instantly tightened and takes on its cone shape. The three-sided solar panel provides power for the entire electronic system. Two design innovations were incorporated to get extra power from the solar array. A reflective white styrofoam disc at the bottom of the pyramid produces 40% more power. The top and bottom of the pyramid are open, allowing better air ventilation, so the cells may operate at their full capacity. The pressure sensor, shown here, measures the ambient pressure at 48,000 feet altitude. It consists of a sensitive aneroid element inside of a temperature-controlled foam sphere. The data encoder is the heart of the entire system. It collects the signals from the various sensors and times the transmitter so that for one second out of every minute, the proper signals are transmitted to the satellite. The very small bead thermistor is the temperature sensor, which is mounted in a circular wire frame on the end of a flexible wand. The radio altimeter is located at the bottom of the flight train. It measures the altitude of the balloon above the ocean surface. The special test equipment was designed so that every unit of the flight train could be accurately tuned for frequency and calibrated for the proper measurements. Here, the transmitter and stable oscillator are being tuned to the proper frequency. The output power is maximized and the antenna is matched to the oscillator. The pressure sensor is tested with a special vacuum chamber and control panel so that the aneroid element will be as accurate as possible at the lower pressures encountered at higher altitudes. The data encoder is being connected to the satellite simulator so that all sensor channels can be monitored and satisfactorily adjusted before being connected to the final flight train.
very fragile temperature sensor wand is also calibrated and checked for continuity at this time before it is connected into the circuit with its data encoder. radio altimeter is checked with a delay line which simulates the path loss from the balloon to the surface of the ocean and back again. This is a very lightweight and sensitive unit used to determine the geometric altitude of the balloon as it flies around the world. The Space Sciences and Engineering Center of the University of Wisconsin made a major contribution to the twirl electronics system with their design and development of the transmitter and stable oscillator, the pressure sensor, and the radio altimeter. Every element of the flight train is carefully calibrated and tested before being finally assembled into the flight train. This involves considerable time and effort on the part of the launch crew to make all of these measurements. After each instrument has been calibrated and checked out, it is connected to the final flight train assembly, which in turn is placed in specially designed trays. These trays protect the instruments from damage during transit to the runway and also make it easier to launch the systems off of the moving platform. After the system is interconnected, it is powered by the solar panel and checked out through the satellite simulator. The instrument tray containing the completed flight train is then placed on the truck. A balloon is brought into the inflation chamber, unfolded, and prepared for inflation. The balloon itself is protected by a polyethylene sleeve which is installed at the factory during fabrication of the balloon. The inflation chambers are specially designed to provide a constant temperature and draft-proof environment so that the balloon, when it is properly inflated with helium, will not bounce around and can be accurately weighed. There are two accurate balances located on top of the inflation chambers to determine when the proper amount of lifting gas has been put into the balloon. The balloon is carefully inflated to a cylindrical shape 
so that it will properly fit into the trough of the NCAR designed launch truck. The balloon is connected to the flight train and is now ready to be launched. After the successful launch, a telex message will be sent to Boulder scientists to confirm that another twirl balloon is on its way. Uh, we'd like to release our second balloon. Uh, over.